Hey, you. Yes, you. I'm talking to you. The singer, the vocalist, the instrumentalist, sitting there watching us play all this amazing music. We need you. Yes, you should join the band, join the team. Who knows, maybe you play drums, or bass, guitar, keyboards, or you even play orchestral instruments, you know. Beautiful. Or maybe you even sing and have an amazing voice, you know, something like. <laughs> Obviously that's not me, that's you. Yeah, join us. Okay, how does that happen? Come to our rehearsal every Thursday. If you're in Bloemfontein, that's 6 o'clock, 6 p.m. If you're in Pretoria, that's quarter past six. And if you're in Johannesburg, that's 6.30. See you there. I'm excited. Yeah, I can't wait to be alongside you guys in this amazing building. We know how exciting it can be to raise a wonderful bundle of joy and raise them in God's ways. As a church, we're privileged to be part of your journey in doing this. So we would love to give you an opportunity to dedicate your wonderful children right here in our church. These are the dates available for this term, the 26th of February and the 26th of March. Speak to your zone pastor today to arrange a date. This week, Pastor Ad Bosov preached an activating message reminding us that we are created in the likeness and image of God. We are blessed and destined by God to excel. Now let's hear what our members had to say. Pastor Ad was speaking about bringing chaos, bringing order to chaos. And he was speaking about how we are blessed to bless other people. God brings the blessing to us so that it can operate through us. The service was really blessed, CRC the place to be, nobody can curse what God has blessed. The service really impacted my life and I'm ready for the week ahead. Serving in media in CRC is such a huge blessing because I get to capture people when they're connecting with the presence of God. It is indeed a very beautiful blessing to witness. Did you know that we have thousands of volunteers that come together across our many locations to ensure that every Sunday is on a whole other level? That's right, our volunteers are passionate about serving others and determined to use their God-given talents and gifts to make a difference. If you would like to find out how you can get involved, head over to our CRC website or you can head over to our info desk for more information.
again, thank you for tuning into our CRC live broadcast. Whether you are in one of our locations or tuning in for the very first time, we welcome you. Yes, Titi, and we are going to be blessed with a phenomenal word from Pastor Ut today. But first, let's get up on our feet. Let's get ready. Make sure we give our best praise and worship. Let's dance our feet as we praise and worship the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, eh? Yeah? You say you work and I'm running, but nothing will hold me back. I'm holding on to your promise. I see your word come to pass. You can do anything, God. I believe it. You. Fall into 
every hand raised in this place tonight. Come on, we give. Sister voices, sister voices, sing it out. We give you all. Come on, every hand raised. sisters tonight, only the ladies, come on, let's hear you. Come on out to the brothers turn. Take it up the level. Come on, lift your hands, every man in this place. We give you all. Jesus, you can you stay free for now? Come on, everybody together. All over South Africa, last time we give from Cape Town all the way to Botswana. Come on. There in your homes, in front of your televisions tonight. Come on, we give him all the glory. Come on, you're all singing too beautiful. One more time, we give. Come on, we give, we give, we give it. We give it a free will offering tonight. Give him your best praise tonight. Come on, Bloemfontein, House of Revival. Come on, they're in Pretoria tonight. They're in Cape Town. They're in Durban. They're in Potsdam. Come on, they're in Johannesburg. Everybody from the left to the right, the front to the back, on the floor, the balcony. Give him praise. Come on. Hallelujah. 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 Come on, give two, three people a high five and say, God is worthy of all the praise. Hallelujah. He's worthy of all the praise. Just put me in the camera properly, please, in the camera shot. Hallelujah. Welcome here tonight. We are going to have an amazing time. It's great to be in this place tonight. Great to see so many friends here in Bloomington and thousands of thousands of you tonight. What an honor to be here. The place is almost full and the students are not back. This is a house of revival. We welcome you tonight. Welcome to Faith TV. Welcome to um, all of uh, Praise TV. Welcome to CRC Online YouTube, um, radio stations, people on every platform tonight. We welcome you tonight. All the churches with us tonight. We are going to have an amazing time. This is your hour. You were chosen to be alive at this time. I say it often. People will tell me all the times. I wish I lived in the days of Elijah or I wish I lived in the days of this person or that person. No, we are living in the greatest days ever. We are living in the latter days. We are living in the last of the last. And this generation, Generation Z and Generation Millennial, you may just see return, the return of Jesus Christ. Come on, how many of you are ready? Not for the rapture, but to make a difference in your world. Amen. Amen. Well, it's so good to be here. Um, fantastic to be in Bloemfontein and to see the energy in this place. Really, I love you and uh, you all are absolutely amazing. Uh, take your seats, please. Let's just send to the camera, please send to the shot. Um, drop it down a bit or up a bit so my head isn't stuck to the ceiling. Media. I want to talk to you tonight on being an influencer. One of the most popular words you hear today is the word an influencer. What is an influencer? Are you called to be an influencer at this time? 
and I want to read Matthew chapter 5 from verse 13 to 16. The Bible says, You are the salt of the earth, but if the salt loses its flavor, how shall it be seasoned? It is then good for nothing but to be thrown out and trampled underfoot by men. You are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hidden. No more FBI Christianity. No more undercover Christianity. No more silent Christianity. This is the time for the church of Jesus Christ to arise in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Nor do men light a lamp and put it under a basket, but on a lampstand. And it gives light to all. You are not in this earth or in this world to conform. You are in this world to shine to everybody that is in your circle of influence. It gives light to all who are in the house. Your oikos, your world of influence, university, school, business, your sphere of influence. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. The Message Bible, quickly before I get into the Word. Let me tell you why you are ya. Um, somebody said the other day that it would be great to go to heaven. I say it's easy to go to heaven. It takes guts to stay. You are called and chosen by God for this hour to stay ya. You are born for this hour to be an influencer and to shape the culture and the history of the hour in Jesus' Name. He says, You are here to be salt seasoning that brings out the God flavours of the earth. We don't see a lot of that on social media, do we? If you lose your saltiness, how will people taste godliness? You've lost your usefulness and will end up in the garbage. Here's another way to put it. You are here to be liked, bringing out the God colours in the world. God is not a secret to be kept. Say Amen. We're going public with us. Say amen, all the young people. Come on. You know, it doesn't take a, a, a lot of light to dispel darkness. Amen. It takes one light to dispel darkness. It takes one person to start a revival. It, starts, it takes one match to start a forest fire. It takes one person to start a prayer meeting in a school. It takes one person to change a business. It takes one person to change a city. It takes one person to change a nation. Come on, you're that person. You are that light in the name of Jesus. Shout amen. I'm talking to young people here tonight, everybody under the age of 85. You are here to bring out the God colors in the world. God is not a secret. We're going public. Say, I'm going public. Come on, preach with me. As public as a city on a hill. If I make you light bearers, you don't think I'm going to hide you under a bucket, do you? I'm putting you on a light stand. That's where He put you. I spoke about that last week. The mountain of the Lord's house will be established upon every other mountain. You were not born again to be under. You were saved to be on top to be the top dog, to be the leader in your community, the leader in your school, the leader, the captain in your sports team, the captain in your uh, uh, debate society. You were created by God to take the top places, the empty spaces. Say amen today. Come on, Cape Town. I know I'm living there, but I'm talking to Cape Town because it's time for them to rise higher than ever before. He says, now that I've put you there on a hilltop, on a light stand, shine. Keep open house, be generous with your lives. By opening up to others, you'll prompt people to open up with God, this generous Father in heaven. So I want to talk to you tonight about being an influencer. A very popular world, word that we see. You switch on TikTok, Instagram, um, Rumble, which I like to watch because it's uncensored, YouTube, Facebook, many different social media platforms. And you find what the world calls influencers. People who shape the culture. People who shape the way we think. People who shape the way we perceive things. People that are loud about the message in your face. As a matter of fact, we saw it at the Grammys. Disgusting how they sang the song Unholy as a satanic ritual in Hollywood in your face. Suck it up. This is our message. We will attack your beliefs, but we will be loud about it. And that's where they start. They push the boundaries and they try to get you to conform 
to their beliefs. They shout the loudest. They are the most vocal on TikTok, the most vocal on everything. And we all know they push the boundaries. And yes, the sad thing, the church is silent. The Christian young person is silent. Either they conform to what those influencers are propagating, the music, the fashion, the media, the beliefs, the culture, the values that the world holds dear, or they just disappear in this society or the culture today of influencers. And my brother and my sister, we need to become the influencers. You as a child of God, you as a young person, you have to make up your mind, you are gonna be an influencer. Because if you're not influencing, you will be influenced by somebody else. If you're not standing for something, you will fall for anything that comes out there. Hey, it's time for young Christians to set the pace. It's time for young Christians to write the culture. It's time for young Christians to say no to ungodliness and no to unrighteousness and refuse to conform to everything that the world is trying to shove down our throats. Are you with me tonight? Come on. This is your hour. You know, I get so tired when people say to me, oh, pastor, I wish I could just be uh, work for a Christian company. I think by myself, I don't say it often, but I think to myself, how boring. Who wants to be a bunch, among a bunch of Christians? I get boring with bored with my staff. I get bored with just Sunday, Hyundai, tie my bow tie people all the time. I want to get out there among the world because I am an influencer. I am the light. Christians don't need the light. Those who are in the world need the light. So you don't want to be the only Christian in your, in your workplace. You may start as the only Christian, but you are there to influence that entire company, that entire environment. You have the light. You have the salt. You have the influence. You should not be intimidated, dominated, influenced by what other people are shoving down your throat. You should realize you were created in the image of God. You are the light. You are the salt. You are the influencer, not Hollywood. Say amen in Jesus' name. So, an influencer is simply a person who influences another question. Are you influenced or are you the influencer? In your circle of friends, in your workplace. If everybody says, let's go party, do you just go along? Or are you the person, while everybody's partying, you get them to church. Come on, that's you. Amen. So an influence is someone in the initial industry with sway over your target audience. We have a young guy in Cape Town. Um, uh, ooh, I, he started doing just normal things on TikTok, not so normal. And I think he's got how many million followers? 17 million or how many? It, it's like crazy. Uh, and he's a born-again Christian, uses uh, that platform. He goes to Hollywood all the time. Uh, Cape Town boy. Uh, Afrikaner and uh, God just gave him influence and he uses that influence to bring his Christian message wherever he goes etc okay uh, it doesn't take, take the money and sell out so influencers have specialized knowledge authority or insight into specific subjects social media is alive with influencers people are trying to push agendas people who are passionate about their agendas where's the church Where's the young Christian? Not the offended Christian. Not the issue-driven Christian. Not the Christian that picks up a wrong cause. But where's the young Christian that uses the platform that God has given them to be an influencer for God's kingdom, to bring out the God colors and the God flavors in society? Because that's what Jesus said. Let me tell you why you are here. You are not here to be influenced. You are not here just to be a run-of-the-mill Christian. You are here to be the influencer in your circle of friends. You are here to be the top dog. You are here to be the salt and to be the light. We'll talk about that tonight. So influencers are people who push the, the boundaries. They push the boundaries. And, and it's always our Christian boundaries that get pushed because Hollywood not dare to attack the Muslim faith because they know the Muslim, Muslims will not accept it. But, but these fools attack our Christian values, attack everything we stand for, and a few people shout, and that's it. If I was you, I'd never buy that fool's record again in my life. Never listen to his music in my life again. I would block him from every area of my world because of his adamant statement publicly trying to influence the minds of young people. Remember how influencers work. They always start with a message that radically out there to get you, yeah. And initially people are shocked by what they say. And if you see it again, those influences take them from where they are, yeah, in their Christ values and 
in their beliefs and in the way they do things and they gradually get influenced by these influencers on TikTok, which is a big thing now, that is sending the message loud and clear. As a matter of fact, if you, if you look at everything in the world, it is social media that promotes it. News agencies, people who actually determine what may be said and what may not be said. Let's not forget the COVID pandemic, how people were censored not to say anything which was against a very specific agenda that people wanted us to buy in the world. Whether you were a doctor, a scientist, no matter what you said, your opinion did not matter because these people have so much power, they think, that they can write the agenda of the world. But I have news for you. God says, I'm going to build my house on top of your agenda. God says, I'm going to fill the earth with my glory. God says, I'm going to move when you think I'm not going to move. God says, when you think you've performed the master stroke, I'm ready to move. Come on. Oh, come on. This is the greatest hour. And you better get ready for God to use you. Position yourself for God to use you. Because all it takes is one radical young person, one person to stand for Jesus Christ and a revival come to your hostel, to your school, to your university, to your hospital. You, my brother and sister, are the influencer. Come on, how many influencers in this place? Give the Lord a praise. Hallelujah. Come on, Pretoria. So these people are in your face. Why are we not in people's face? Whoever told us that Christians are supposed to be timid. Who sold us that lie? Because that's not what Jesus said. Nothing timid about light. Nothing timid about salt. You put salt in food, you taste it. You switch the light on, the darkness is gone. It has instant impact, not kumbaya, by the way. God's not given us a spirit of fear, power, love, sound mind. We're not these timid individuals. We are world shakers, history makers. We were born for this hour. The light in us is greater than the darkness out there. This is our time to shine. This is our time to stand up. This is our time to come on there in Pretoria, young people. To be people of influence in Jesus' name. To stop wasting away and losing yourself because of the influences in your class, the influences in your school, the influences in your rugby team, the influences in your soccer team. You need to become the influencer in the name of Jesus Christ because people are waiting for you. God prepared you for this hour. So they push boundaries to get their message, their agenda, their cause out there in the public domain. Unapologetically in your face. That's how they operate. People who influence the culture of the day through fashion. I mean, now I see, I, I was in Australia now and bell bottoms are back. Now, young people won't even know what bell bottoms are. Maybe you will, I don't know, but it's back, okay? Now, bell bottoms were there in the 60s and 70s and now bell bottoms are back. It's like, who decides that? Some model, some movie star, some fashion company that finds somebody with influence and says, wear this. And they wear it, and every person thinks they looks, uh, uh, looks at it and thinks it's cool. Well, depending on your body shape, it's not so cool, and it doesn't complement everybody's shape. You have to dress according to your body shape and not be influenced, because listen, sometimes people wear some stuff that does not complement them, because how you look and what the picture says are two different things. I'm talking to the brothers now, okay? I'll leave the girls. We've got many hairdressers and they'll say, women, find this picture. And then they say, I want my hair like that. Well, girl, listen, number one, you need to understand your face shape. Face shape. Because not all the hair is going to fit every face. Okay, that's free. It's like bald's not going to work for me. I can't do a Pastor Clive, you understand, or a Pastor Tabu. It's going to work for me. I don't have a great shape head, so I better keep the hair I have. Not going to be fashionable for me. Some of these uh, movie stars that look great, I'm not going to look great. That I figured out, so I'll keep what I have, okay? So uh, they, 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 um, they, they influence fashion, 
news, media, talk shows, sport. I mean, an agenda, suddenly it gets pushed by every sports team. Whatever the agenda. It's opinion, sexuality. Suddenly people are grappling with sexuality because there are some influencers who started saying certain things that causes the whole world suddenly to question their sexuality. 20 years ago, nobody had a problem. Today, everybody has a problem with sexuality. Not everybody, many people. They influence culture through their music. Politicians are influencers. I mean, you've watched a politician, okay? And I learn from them as well. If they get asked a question, they never answer the question, they push their agenda. So I'll do exactly the same. When people ask me a question, I don't answer the question, I push my agenda. Then that interviewer can say, but I've asked you this. I say, okay, blah, 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 blah. Okay, now for the third time, I'm asking you this question. Blah, 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 blah. Because that's what an influencer does. They push their agenda. They are there to influence you all the time. Like that person at school that doesn't give up, that's trying to get you to lose your testimony. That person that's trying to use peer pressure to get you what you don't want to do. Listen, tonight you're gonna break out of that. Tonight you are gonna break the power of every negative influence over your life and you are gonna become an influencer right there. And you're gonna bring that person to church, that man, that girl to church and they're gonna get saved and sanctified and delivered. Shout amen. So they um, shape our beliefs our values. They do everything in their power and it's always extreme because nobody, listen Christian, nobody follows anything that's mediocre. No one follows anything that's mediocre. That's why when people want to pacify young people, it doesn't work. People need, young people need a cause. Young people need a revolution. Young people need to understand that Jesus Christ, He's the greatest revolutionary that ever walked this earth. There was nothing passive about Jesus Christ, nothing domesticated, nothing civilized, nothing nice, my young brother. He challenged you to live to a whole nother level. I mean, if you want to talk about an influencer, there's the man, Jesus Christ. Started with 12 disciples today, there's 1.7 billion Christians. You want to talk about influence. You want to talk about somebody that reshaped culture without social media, but with belief, with passion, with purpose. He was relentless. Everywhere he went, he preached the gospel of the kingdom everywhere. He would not compromise. He taught the kingdom cause. He lived the kingdom cause. And he was the light of the world, the light that shines in darkness. And that's you and me today. He says, as my Father sent me, so send I you. You are the light and you are called to shine like Jesus Christ. Philippians chapter 2 verse 15 says, in the midst of a crooked and perverse generation, this world needs your light. This world needs your saltiness. Because if you are not a salty Christian, you've lost your usefulness. You've lost your impact. Jesus says you're worth nothing. You're good for nothing if you've lost your saltiness. How many of you put salt over your food and you don't taste it? You're going to throw the cellar out, right? Because it has no impact. So people need to feel us. When we show up, people need to experience a difference. When you sit in the university, not judging people, they should feel your light and your saltiness. They should see you are immune to the ungodly influences. You are fireproof. You're a child of God. You don't jump this way, this way, this way, this way. You're not a dingbat, a yo-yo, a big dip, a Christian. You are somebody that have decided to follow Jesus Christ. Can I have an amen, okay? So if you watch the people in the world, especially musicians, they always take it to a whole nother level. You watch the specific person, I wanna say his name because YouTube won't like it. But you watch previously the agendas he pushed and now the Grammy is one of the biggest uh, uh, platforms in the world. He took it to a whole nother level in your face. And he challenged the whole Christian community. 1.7 billion in the supposed name of fashion and music. The song is brilliant, but the words are absolutely demonic. The whole show was absolutely demonic. And I was watching the clip of it 
and I and everybody stood up. Everybody. And I thought, how many of those are Christians standing up in that place? And they're standing. There wasn't one boo. Not one. Because that's what the large part of the church has become. Voiceless. Saltless, if there's a word like that. Tasteless. Influenceless. I'll make many words. Just go with the flow. Don't want to offend anybody. Trying to tell you, you may not talk about Jesus. But everybody else can talk about their agenda. What's that? When Jesus says, you are the salt. You are the light. You are not supposed to put your light under a bucket. You're not supposed to be silent. You're not supposed to be an undercover Christian. You are the hope of the world. You are the light of the world. You are the salt of the world. So Satan will do everything in his power to silence the voice of the church. We saw that through the pandemic. Now, we need to come back stronger. I say we need to come strong back stronger. We need to be more radical than ever. We need to be loud and unashamed. We need to go on a mission. We need to go on a march. We need to go on a toy toy, a Jesus toy toy. We have to stand at the gates of our universities and our prayer meetings. We have to go climb on mountains. We have to go into classrooms where they say we cannot pray and we have to have prayer meetings. Come on, young person, in the name of Jesus, because if you don't do this, Jesus, think radically, some other radical cause is going to swallow you up. You better get radical for Jesus. Shout, give Him a radical praise tonight. Come on. You know, before I got saved, I didn't half sin. There's a lot of people who half sin. I had a lot of friends that say, Hey, Vazi, Vazi, beer, and drink a lot boss. No, man, I reckon if you're going to sin, you sin publicly. If you're going to serve Jesus, you serve Jesus publicly. Come on, say amen. So influences shape the culture and the value and the beliefs because of the absence of light. Not all influences are bad, but there's a lot of stuff that nobody even challenges. My question is, when you go on social media, where are the Christians? Here and there you will see somebody that wins a Grammy and say, I want to thank the man upstairs. Oh, just shut your trap, please. We don't need you to be so disrespectful to the living God. If you cannot give God the glory, you just shut your trap, please. You're not giving God any glory. I want to thank the man upstairs. He's not the man upstairs. He's the King of Kings and the Lord of all Lords. He's the God who created you. He's the God who keeps you alive. He's the God who gave you that gift. And you may breathe today and be gone tomorrow. And you'll stand before this living God. Why are we embarrassed? Why are we ashamed of this Jesus Christ? Why do we hide our light under a bushel? Why can everybody else shout their cause and we are silent as Christians? What the heck is wrong with Christians? When they shout their cause, they don't care how they get attacked on social media. They push their agenda. And our agenda is to bring God to society. Our agenda is we're God's representatives, not our own. You want a revival, you better get radical. You're not going to have a revival this generation half-heartedly. You're not going to have a revival at convenience sake. You have to know what you believe, become what you believe, and stand on your beliefs. No matter the opposition, because the opposition will crumble, because the light that is in you is greater than the darkness out there in the world. So amen tonight, come on. Oh, come on, CRC Plumfontein, you're a house of revival. We are gonna see a revival in this city like never. I said we are gonna see a revival in this city like never. Shout amen if you believe it. So they are out there shouting their messages from the rooftops. And if I read the Bible, God says, we have to shout from the rooftops, which is the places of influence, by the way. Unapologetically, we apologetic. Romans 12, verse 1 and 2, the message Bible says, so here's what I want you to do. God is helping you take your everyday ordinary life, your sleeping, eating, going to work, and walking around life, and place it before God as an offering. Embracing what God does for you is the best thing that you can do for Him. Don't become so well adjusted, listen, to your culture that you fit into it without even thinking. 
If you listen to somebody's music, you better study the life of that person because that person's values are coming through that person's music. Instead, fix your attention on God, young person. You'll be changed from the inside out. Readily recognize what He wants from you and quickly respond to it. Unlike the culture around you, always dragging you down to each level of immaturity. You're in the world, you're not of the world. You can't sleep with the world. You can't walk with the world. You cannot be polluted by the world. You have to understand you are in this world. And you are here not to adjust to the culture. You are here to influence the culture. That's on every level. From the political level, music level, education, wherever God has placed you, medicine, science, you are there to influence the culture in your world, the people that you influence. If it's two people now, you have to influence them. They should not influence you. If it's 10, you should be the influencer. If it's 100, you should be the influencer. You can start as the Esther in the company. You don't have to start as the director. And you can influence the whole nation by not losing yourself and by not selling yourself. Like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego that was taken to Daniel to Babylon as slaves they did not adjust to the culture. As a matter of fact, the Bible says they purposed in their hearts not to be defiled by the delicacies of Babylon. They did not eat the portions that Babylon offered them. They said, no, we belong to the living God. We may be in the yoke of slavery, but we serve the living God. We will not bow to your delicacies. The delicacies. And when Nebuchadnezzar set up the graven image, they even went further and they said, we will not bow to this graven image. What is that image? The image of the world, the world, what is supposed happiness, what is supposed success that the world has portrayed as happiness on social media. Have you seen when people post pictures, they only post their highs, they never post their lows, right? When people post their marriage, they just show, are oh, we the happiest family? And then you know behind the scenes, they ain't happy at all, but they're telling everybody we're the happiest. Just leave your personal stuff off social media, please. Just stop putting your personal stuff on social media. And just shine for Jesus Christ, okay? Because we all know your life is not perfect. We all know it. Oh, we're just the greatest family. <laughs> That's a belief, man. Let's ask the dog. Or the neighbor. Not the make-believe, because that's what social media has done. Make-believe. Your friends know who you are. Your children know who you truly are. The people around you know who you are. But social media has created this platform where people want, once a year they put a picture, we're perfect. No, 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 show us your lows as well, please. Tell us the whole story. Don't just show us your highs. Tell us your lows as well. Tell us your losses as well. Don't just tell us, bought the new car. whoop doo 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 What about the person that sits in the squatter camp and he cannot afford a new car? You have not inspired him. It's not something that you should be doing. Oh, fall off your chair, please, man. Let's just get real here for a moment. We don't have to propagate the values of the world. The world that says, if you marry a wife like this, if you have a car like this, a house like this, well, if you have a dog like mine, you're going to be okay. I'm going to post about him. He's one years old, 55 kilograms. He's a brute, okay? But his name is the Duke, I'll st the Duke. I'll still introduce him to you, okay? It's a beautiful thing. Big head, like, like massive. In any case, distraction. If you have a dog like that, your life is perfect, okay? <laughs> I mean, he's got feet bigger than my hands. He's got arms bigger than my arms. I, th I say, Duke, you better stop growing now. I'm starting to get an inferiority complex. <laughs> so, we're not supposed to, to conform to the culture that the, Jesus said that drags you down. It drags you down. You grow up in, as a church girl and you know certain things are appropriate, certain things are inappropriate, and you watch all this TikTok and all the nonsense, and the next minute you become like that. Because now you're being influenced by what you think is, is going to give you the attention you need. You have attention. 
you have acceptance. You don't want to be conforming to this world. You don't want to be stooping down to what this world presents as, as, as their values. You don't want to lose yourself in, 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 in all that the world is propagating, okay? You're not, you don't want to conform. Come on, I said you don't want to conform, okay? You want to be authentic. You want to be an influencer. The way God created you to influence through your personality, character, and the place that God set you. And if you will be faithful in the little, God will increase your sphere of influence for His glory. So the reality is either we influence or we are being influenced. Jesus makes it pretty clear. He says, you are the salt of the earth. You are the light of the world. Why does He use salt and light? And we'll talk about it for a moment. I have to say bye to the TV audience in a second. It's because salt and light both influence and they both change the environment they find themselves in. You put a little bit of salt in a stew, you taste it. If we switched off all the lights tonight and one of you put your cell phone light on, we'd all see it, right? So salt and light... He chooses them very, very specifically because they both mean influence and they both symbolize something that has the inherent ability to change the environment they find themselves in. So we have the inherent ability within us to change any environment to be the influencer of the stew. Come on, those on television, switch on to our social media platforms. I'm not a half yet. God bless you. God loves you. Be the influencer where you found yourself. Hail Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So anybody can taste when there's no salt in the food. Like you can taste when there's no Christian uh, uh, in the campus or the Christian has become quiet or the Christian has lost its saltiness. That's a sad thing. When you see somebody that was on fire and now they, they, they look warm. That's a sad thing. You see a boy that was the influencer at school and now at university, everybody else has influenced him. It's actually a sad picture. It's very sad. It's actually heartbreaking when you see young people and me pastoring the church uh, for so many years and then seeing how many of your children are now serving God with the same passion that you serve God. Esmeralda's daughter. Hey, how beautiful is she? On the platform dancing, yeah. Energy, passion. Hey girl, you're an influencer. You're going to shake the world. I told you that since the day you were born. Beautiful girl. Beautiful girl. Very gifted. Very vibrant personality. Whatever you set your mind to, you'll be able to do. You know it. You go for it. You aim for the high places because that's where God's going to take you. So anybody can taste if salt is not in food. And we all know the absence of light. Right, Eskom? I mean, right? So, uh, we, we get the picture. The government's helped us. <laughs> so, when Jesus walked this earth, listen quickly, He used the salt and light. Salt, in those days, were a very, very valuable commodity. In ancient China, salt was second to gold only in value. In Rome, the soldiers were paid with salt. Salt was deemed as one of the purest things on the earth because it comes from the whitest and purest properties, both sea and sun. So clearly when Jesus talks about salt, He talks about a Christian that is pure, clean and full of light. Because that's the person who will have influence. So I have to go quickly now. What salt does? Number one, salt flavors food. It's a binder and a stabilizer. We add food, salt to food to bring taste to food. As Christians, we are called to bring out the God flavors in society. So if decay takes place in the university, it's because the Christians are either religious or the Christians are not doing their God-given job, which is to be the salt and to be the light for Jesus Christ. And I'm not talking about being preachy. I'm not talking about judging people. I'm not talking about uh, condemning people. I'm talking about being the influencer. Listen, you make up your mind. Ain't nobody pushing me around. Ain't nobody pulling me down. Ain't nobody deciding what I will do. You decide that. Nobody else has that power over your will. 
so jy vou op soos een tuinstoel wanneer mense met hulle agendas kom of jy sta sterk vir God onbreekbaar, onbuigbaar want dis wie jy is jy druk my nie rond nie, jy stoot my nie rond nie jy druk nie jou agenda ek, ek stoot nie my identiteit nie, ek het my identiteit ek weet wie ek is, ek is een christen ek is nie op soek nie, ek het die weg en die waarheid in die lewe gevind I have found Jesus, I have found the pearl of great price I have found the Messiah I'm not looking, I'm not looking I have found what you are looking for you are looking for it in the wrong place and I'm not going to take your junk and you're not going to shove it down my throat because I have the light of life once you find the light, the true Christ, the true Messiah your searching is over you cannot be influenced by everybody anymore so you have to decide who you are and become who Jesus said you are because the purpose of light is to shine if the light doesn't shine we replace the bulb, right? So if you're not going to be the influencer, God has to put somebody else there that will be the influencer. Because you ain't doing your job. Your function is to shine. You're not shining. God's going to find somebody and you will lose your reward. Let me tell you very clearly. I mean, you get these young on fire guys and I've been, like I say, a pastor for a few years and I've seen it for, for 30 something years on fire and a girl comes along and they lose themselves for a girl. That's it gone out of church or she's a girl that served God passionately and a guy comes around and she stops serving God what the heck is that what weakness is that how true was your Christianity that a worldly guy comes along and knocks your feet out from under you. What the heck is wrong with you, girl? Have you even seen the light? Have you found the light? Because now you're looking for light in somebody that's filled with darkness. Doesn't that guy that's sitting with you in church tonight... That's not sold out to Jesus. You tell him after this service, Tamaya. The Afrikaans word say footsack. Footsack. Waar gaan jy, Janny? Vat jou goed en trek, Ferreira. Weg is jy uit my lewe. Jy sê vir hom, vanavond. Vanavond sê jy vir hom. Footsack. Foot. Weg is jy. Weg. Uit. Drijf hom uit soos die duivel. Uit. Trying to break your will, your will in the school every day. Give him a piece of your mind, girl. Tell him to Tsamaya. Tsek. Every day he comes with these three cool friends. Come tell us, we'll deal with him. We had somebody that arrested my daughter. Because we know who we are, okay? Arrest Angelique when she was at school, older guy that was targeting her and um, was obviously somebody that was, well, she's blonde and um, parked every day, started sending her little papers and letters and sweets and all these things. And we picked up on that. So I spoke to Pastor Andre and he got one of the other guys, people that aren't pushovers, and they went to the guy. And the one stood at the door on the one side, took the keys out of the ignition, and one climbed in the car, and he was orientated on his steering wheel for five seconds, never to return. Now that's Christianity. They made him a gummy bear. Show me the way. I can't see the way anymore. Show me the way. Where's the way? <laughs> so if you're harassed as a woman, we're not going to talk about gender-based violence and manipulation. Come tell us. We'll sort that little fool out. Let me tell you very carefully. We'll deal with him. We'll deal with him. We'll deal with him. 
That boy that's objectifying you all the time, come and tell us. Come and tell your pastors, we'll deal with him. We'll deal with him. We're not just going to talk as a church, we'll deal with him. We'll deal with him. Sitting under his hat, we'll deal with him. Hij gaan zijn weekje van zijn kop verloor. Skop, 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 skop. Je hoed komt van je kop af. <laughs> Amen. You know, we need to protect our children at a vulnerable age. And I'm talking to young people here. You, our children in the Lord will protect you. Don't let people mess around with you. You think you're going to come in here and target the girls in this church? Don't let us find you. You come with your disgusting, worldly, rude spirit to try and seduce women in this church. We will come for you. We will flip and take you by your ear and throw you out of this place. Let me tell you very, very clearly. Clearly, we'll deal with you quickly, decisively. Listen to me carefully. Listen, listen. Because we've had to do it before. You come here with your defiant, arrogant spirit to try and pollute girls in this church. So number two, or if salt loses its flavor, it's of no benefit to anyone any longer. Do you get it? Huh? Number two, salt is a preservative. It prevents and delays death and decay. For many years, we know before they were refrigerated, salt was used as an instrument to reduce corruption of meat and other foods so that they could be edible for a longer period. The way we as believers live our lives for Christ and the way we are vocal about our beliefs will slow down the decay in society where they live. Slow it down because things will get worse. But while we are on watch before the rapture, we can keep evil at bay. Number three, salt has healing properties. I love this. For this reason, many people go to the Dead Sea. I went there as well and floated in the Dead Sea, okay? Um... For ther therapeutic, therapeutic, therapeutic reasons and healing qualities. It is in anti-inflammatory and antibacterial properties. Can help with weight loss, skin conditions, acne, depression, improves asthma, can lower your blood pressure and many other things. Can be a source of healing to those around us. Story in the Bible, Old Testament, Elisha, when the water was polluted, like now in Blumenheim, put some salt in your water, don't drink it, okay? 2 Kings 2, verse 20 and 22, the Bible says, And he said, Bring me a new bowl and put salt in it. So they brought it to him. And then he went to the source of the water and cast it, the salt in there and said, Thus says the Lord, I've healed the water. From it there shall be no more death or barrenness. Let me tell you that the sea of humanity is polluted. The sea of humanity needs healing. You carry the remedy as a child of God. You have to get out there in the world. You have to get beyond the church walls. You have to get out the cellar, the salt cellar. It, you know, when the salt is sitting in the cellar, it means nothing. You have to shake it, turn it, get the salt out. We have to get Christians in society. We have to get Christians among the broken. We have to Christ get Christians out there to be salt so they can bring healing to the broken hearts, healing to the emotional broken. You carry the healing remedy of God within you through the love of Jesus Christ. Then number four, and I love this, salt melts snow. Used in many countries on icy roads. If you've ever gone to see uh, a ski, you'll see they throw salt on, on, on the roads to melt the snow. When applied to snow or ice, salt lowers the melting point of the mixture. Salty Christians will melt frozen hearts and turn those people back to God. If you look like the world and act like the world, you turn nobody back to Jesus Christ. You're a salty Christian, you will cause those frozen hearts to warm up to Jesus Christ. Salty Christians will melt these hearts. Many people have snow and ice on their hearts. Their hearts have accumulated coldness and hardness for whatever reason. People get offended. People get hurt. People grow up religiously. They want nothing to do with Christianity, nothing to do with the church. They get involved in worldliness, which in the end of the day heals you, breaks your soul. You carry the remedy. Your love, your acceptance, and the life you live without compromise will turn those people to Christ, will will melt the snow. And it's not always instant. Sometimes it's over a period of time. You just 
keeping your testimony and your witness and being loving. Here's the deal, you know, when people are in trouble, they know who to phone, right? They phone the Christian. They're quick to criticize the Christian. But you ask people in your world, who is the real Christian? Everybody knows who the real Christian is. Everybody also knows who the compromising Christian is. Right? Get quiet on me now. So salt of the earth means an individual or group considered as representatives of the best or noblest elements of society. So when we talk about changing, influencing our nation, we need to get places where we are anti-corruption. We need to see Christians rise in positions of leadership where people can rectify things, where people can bring service delivery, where people can fix the roads, where people can restore the medical system in South Africa. We are the healers, we are the salt, we are the fixers, come on. We are the influencers. We are not the critics that sit on the sideline and criticize the government. This is the greatest hour for the church to arise and shine, but not just to Shandai Hyundai, but to be the problem solvers, the solution finders, to get yourself in places like Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, Abednego, where you are 10 times better, where you solve the problems that the world cannot solve, because that is where your influence will emanate from. That's why you cannot just live this Christian life without purpose. You cannot just go through life floating from day to day. You have to realize you are ordained by God, appointed by God, chosen by God, predestined by God. You are a royal priesthood. You are the light of the world. You are the salt of the earth. You are the ones that should preserve society. You are the ones. You have the light. You have Christ on the inside. It's time for you, my brother and my sister, to take your place in every seat of authority every place of influence, every space that is unoccupied to get yourself elected in places of influence so that you can eradicate poverty little by little, bring social justice, bring reform to your community, establish the house of God upon every other mountain. This is our time, but we have to realize why we are alive. Let me tell you why you are here. You are yet to bring out the God flavors in society. And part of that, sit down, is okay. Part of that is you need to show people godly order. Stop underrating yourself and acting like you're part of the problem. You are the solution. You are the hope of the world. You can be a 25-year-old engineer and you can fix Eskom, a power station. Why not? Give me one reason. People mustn't come with experience. There are people that are 100 years old and they have no experience. Jesus was 30 and He changed the world. What are you waiting for? What are you waiting for? You can change the, the environment that you're in. The house you live in can be the cleanest in the neighborhood. There shouldn't be papers in your yard. There shouldn't be weeds growing on your pavement. Let's start there. Everybody should drive past there and say, there's something different. The place is always clean. The place is always neat. Even if it's a little pandoki, it should be clean. It should represent God. You're an ambassador of God. You don't see an embassy and it's like a rubbish dump. No matter where the embassy is built, the embassy represents that country. Your house, your dorm, your place, your bed represents the kingdom of God. You're an ambassador. So your bed should be the neatest in the entire hostel. I spoke to somebody one day, he said, if you haven't made the bed for three, four, five days, then the bed really sleeps nice. Ach, sis, man. Sisa. Yuck, 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 yuck. Sis. Sisa. Sis, 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 sis. Yucky, 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 yucky. Yucky boy. What's a vrouw wil met jou trouw? It's not so difficult to get up. First thing, make your bed. 
How do you even feel okay if you come back to your house and your bedroom is untidy? I walked into somebody's home one day, and needless to say, they never went anywhere in life. And I realized the day I walked into the house why I didn't. Because I walked in there, and when the front door opened, there was a smell. And the smell was the result of two to three weeks old dishes that had piled up. Because the wife was too lazy to wash a dish. She wasn't working. He worked. She didn't work. She was lazy. And you could smell that laziness. You know when people are lazy, they don't clean, and you smell that. Have you smelled that? Are you familiar with it? <laughs> I tell young guys, and I don't know what it is, and they say, "Let's rest on the fence long." I don't know what it is, man. You love, you love me, man. We can't even hear the words in the afternoon. I say, "You smell like a fence long." They don't know what's that in English. Because now the guys come back from gym. He didn't shower. Then he goes to work. He didn't shower, and then he just puts deodorant on sweat. And then the evening he puts more deodorant on sweat. Then he takes the girl out. No wonder she doesn't want to kiss him. So not even <laughs> that deodorant is influencing your smell. Okay. So as Christians, so so, so that's what Saul does. What does the light do? I'll stop now. Um, simply it dispels darkness. It exposes and dispels, not judgmentally. It exposes darkness to rectify it, the effects of darkness, to fix it, to fix the result of darkness. The whole world lies in darkness. We are the light. When light shows up, it exposes the need for change, the need for Jesus, not judgment, but to correct people and to bring them back to the part of life which is light. In him was light, and the life became life to men. So your light brings life, not condemnation. Your life brings freedom, not judgment. Your life, the Bible says, God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved, John 1. In he was light, and the light became the life of men. So when your light shines, it brings life. Firstly, spiritually, emotionally, every area of that person's life. So you turn on the light, darkness leaves. And the need of that person is exposed. The person can't hide the brokenness, the mess, the want, the lack, whatever it is, the sin. And you have the answer, which is Christ. Because Jesus is the light and Jesus is the light in you. Not a little Jesus, the same Jesus that walked the earth lives on the inside of you. The same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead dwells on the inside of you. That's why you cannot walk around like, oh, I don't know what to do. And oh, I'm the only Christian. Oh, I feel overwhelmed. And oh, peer pressure. Oh, just grow up. Come on, grow up. Grow up. Suck in your tummy. Grow up. Straighten your back. Carry yourself with dignity. It's the greatest honor to be the only Christian in a school because then you have the greatest opportunity to see how powerful Christ is on the inside of you and how you can change your world. When I clarked into the army, I was the only Christian, only Christian that clarked in. By the end of that year, half my platoon were born again and in the church where I was because I shined the light of Jesus Christ to those people. I didn't allow their flicking and their cursing, although I just came out of that. I was a Christian saved for a few months when I went into the army, remember. Brand new, born again. Didn't go through new believers classes or anything, but I had the light of Christ on the inside of me. There I clawed in, 2nd of January, 14th of November, I get saved. Six weeks later, I clawed into the army. But Christ was real. And, and you know when people put on their brown uniforms, most of them lose themselves. But I found myself and I found Christ in me, the power of Christ. And when they had still the day, I would get on my bed in the middle, kneel on my bed and pray in tongues. Loud, not... I went, I didn't know anything better. I was baptized in the Holy Ghost. I didn't know it was appropriate or inappropriate. All I knew is I had to talk to God. I had 15 minutes to talk to God. And I didn't understand the silent time because God's not silent. When you talk to God, it's not a silent prayer. And every night after I prayed, they would all sit and there were like 14 people in the room. They sit at me with eyes this big and they look at me. 
And then one after the other said, I want what you've got. I said, okay, come with me to the iron room. I say, lift up your eyes, receive Jesus Christ, ask God for the baptism in the Holy Ghost, and then we get baptized in the Holy Ghost. Half my platoon got saved without me doing an evangelism course or anything. I just had the light of Jesus on the inside of me. I found Jesus. I found what I was looking for. And I knew every human being on planet Earth needs Jesus Christ because without Jesus, you ain't never going to be happy. And you're never going to live in a place of victory in Jesus. Now, are you hearing me? And I was brought on orders the end of that year or October, third best on the course stayed at uh, the place to train because they keep the top three lieutenants. And the reason was the um, chaplain brought me on orders because I influenced too many people to follow Christ. How's that? And uh, um, God, who has a great sense of humor when you stand for him, um, because I'm sitting in front of Colonel Roberts, who's the brigadier commander. Now you're 18 years old, you understand? You're sitting before the top brass. They sit there. All of them sit there. And the only people they bring there is people that are thrown off the course. And I was the best, top three. So I knew there was a challenge. And the hypocrisy of that religious person who brought all the charges against me. Sounds like it was in the Bible, okay? But God gave me boldness. The Spirit of God said, because I didn't know much, but I read the Bible every day. Over, I just read the Bible. I consumed the Bible. gave me the strength. And God said, don't even think what you will say because the words will be given you. It's in the Bible. And I had peace and I had boldness. And they asked me, so he asked me a question. He said, in Afrikaans, but in English they're translated. He says, if one of your soldiers gets shot in Angola, what will you say to them? Because you tell everybody God is good. I say, yes, God is good. And yes, I will tell them it's not God who killed them. And yes, I will tell them, I will make sure that they go to heaven before they die. That's why I tell people about Jesus Christ. And then they ask question about question. And yeah, the RSM stands up. Look, he's unsaved. He was as unsaved, as unsaved as they can be. And he stands up there and he says, Colonel, Ag Vietnam, no what's a blinkery, blinkery, blink, 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 blinkery, blink, 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 here is the. My area is even as best to light an hunter, all set up and there God intervenes because I stood for him, not through some religious, pious individual, but through somebody that is a Philistine, uncircumcised, and God got me in my destiny. God called somebody else to stand for me because I stood for him. And he could see that what I believed was real. And that's where I learned to preach the next year with my platoon. Started with 50 every night I would go. Every night, still to take, Lieutenant goes, they sit there. And every night I would share the gospel with them. And every night, I would say every head bowed, every eye closed. Every night. They must have thought, uh, you know, uh, um, some well-known sportsmen, were, were, they studied... So they had their degrees and then they were in my platoon. I want to say their names here. One was a Springbok uh, cricket coach. And I would say, every head bowed, every eye closed. Now tonight, if you want to give your life to Jesus, then I'm watching. I waited till they all raised their hands. In that year, I wasn't going to relate. I was going to make altar calls till everybody gave their life to Jesus Christ because I had the authority, you understand? They had to listen. So I used my platform to tell people because I believe. Without Jesus Christ, you're not going to heaven. And let's can this thing, all roads lead to Rome. All roads lead to heaven. No. There's one Savior. There's one mediator. Jesus Himself said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father but by me. We should stop this neutral approach. And we should not judge and contain people. And we should not slander other religions. But we need to be loud about our Savior. Loud about what Jesus came. We are His ambassadors. The Bible says in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, God lives in us. God is crying out through us. God is imploring people, be reconciled to God. Get right with God. Give your life to Jesus Christ. Don't waste away through sin in the world. Jesus died for you. Jesus loves you. We have to be loud and unashamed about the hope we carry because that's what people need out there in the world. Amen? That's what they need. That's who we should be. That's who we are. That's why we are alive. To bring God back to civilization, society, and to be the influence, the light, and to see through the sin and through the facade and the pretense and the TikTok and all the emptiness. Because they're all hollow, empty shells. Empty shells make the loudest noise, right? We should look beyond that. 
we should realize we have what they want. Not they have what we want. Then something is wrong. Then what you have is not real. Because what you have, silver and gold cannot buy. What you have cost Jesus Christ, His life, heaven's best. So tonight, are you the influencer or are you being influenced? Have you lost your saltiness? Do you have to regain your saltiness? Because if we're not salty, we have no impact. If we're not living as a light, we switch it off. It's impossible for a light to not have impact. I mean, it is a, let's just think about this. Jesus starts with 12. 12 becomes 120. 3,120. And they have so much impact that they change the whole world through influence. Because they believed in a cause. This move CRC started here in Bloemfontein. Lady Brain, but then Bloemfontein with a few people. And today you travel to any CRC church all over South Africa, all over the world, and you find people come from this city, Bloemfontein. All over. Come on, all the churches can give this city a hand clap. All the pastors. But some of your greatest volunteers come from this house. Yeah, you know what I'm saying is true. All over this country. Some of the greatest volunteers come from this house, Bloemfontein. But now it's time for this generation to pick up the baton and to become the influencers for this hour, for this time, not to be this neutral ground, but to be sold out as we were when we started, Leon, Andre, Rafael, Anna Andre, full on. Gabriel, Pastor Edward, that's not here, full on. When nobody even knew what CRC was or anything, we believed that we can change the world and build buildings and do whatever God told us to do. No matter what odds are against us, no matter what people say about us, we believed it with everything in us. When we lose that passion and that zeal and the next generation doesn't carry it, it is a flame that's waning. And the influence subsides because we've become, not we, not me, you have become adjusted to a culture of no impact. Because when we had a youth revival, Pastor Leon, that was the first youth, youth pastor, we had no youth. There wasn't youth. There was belief. And we influenced every school because of his belief, etc. Pastor Shadrach led a revival on the university like I've never seen. Yeah, that has to re be reignited, right? Because we can't sit on the glory days of yesterday. Those young people were full on. Sold out. Radical. On fire. Nie elke vrijdag aan gaan vry. Saturday gaan vry. Sondag kom sing nie. Nee, hulle was uitverkoop. Totaal uitverkoop. Christenen wat nie totaal uit verkoop is, al het geen aanpak in die wereld nie. Zero. So the issue is not about Satan's power, because he's rendered harmless and ineffective against us. The issue is about the lack of influence that we carry. The lack of impact. And that is something we have to seriously take as an admonition. That we look at ourselves and say, Why? Are we wanting for impact? Where are the influences? Where are the youth influences? Where are the student influences? Where are the voices that are louder than the sinners and the political influences and all the other influences on campus and in the schools and society? Where's the church? Where's this young generation? 20 years ago we had them. Where are they now? Where are the influences that is dominating the climate in the university? 
So all the fancy talk and all the skinny jeans and all the holes and all your fashion and all your nonsense will not change anything. You have to get full on with God. You have to get full on with God. I said you have to get full on with God. You have to get radical down there in Durban, down there in Cape Town, in Potsdam. You have to get radical. Because no young person will follow anybody that's not radical. You have to get radical. Radical! You have to get radical. 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 Radical for Jesus. Or there will be no youth revival. Because the saltless ones will stop every endeavor and every effort. They will neutralize. Every action, every activity. Like when we started, we made it very clear. Whether people believe in tithing or not, we said if you're a leader, you have to be a tither. Because if you're not a tither, you're going to influence people in your ways, which is against the Bible. We can't allow it. If you're a leader, you have to be a church goer. You have to love the house of God. Not talk about loving God's house. Because you influence the people that we put in your home cell. So if you don't show up in church, you tell everybody it's not okay to go to church. You are influencing people negatively. We can't allow it. These weren't laws. These were our passion, our lifestyle, our shared values. Because we realized without that we won't change anything. That certain things cannot be compromised, debated. Certain things are biblical. And if you want to play as an influencer in leadership, you have to step up to our biblical values and beliefs so that when you do or do not do, the people that follow you are influenced in the right way. Because you always influence people through what you do and don't do. You don't sing, you influence people. You sing, you influence people. You don't give, you influence people. You give, you influence people. You don't come to church, you influence people. You come to church, you influence people. So this casual approach that people have, well, it's Sunday, I'll see if I go to church. <laughs> My word. Okay. You think I talk as a pastor. When I got saved, it became my life. The church became my life. Not because I was a pastor when I went to university. The church was my life. I didn't skip a Sunday, not a Sunday morning, not a Sunday evening, didn't skip a prayer meeting, didn't skip nothing. It was my life. It, I was in it, boots and all. I don't get this half-hearted Christianity. I don't get it. Because it's nowhere in the Bible. And as a matter of fact, it's a disease that are putting people off. From full commitment to Jesus Christ. If you're a leader and you stand with your arms folded in worship, you're telling everybody. You're influencing people. The offering basket goes past you, you don't give a cent, you influence people. Sunday morning, come, your, church, your seat is empty. You're influencing people. Let's start there. Before we even influence people out there, how responsible are we with the influence we have in the house? You think I feel like showing up every Sunday? I have to remind myself sometimes that you have to go because you have to preach. But where's a Bible for me and a Bible for you? Where does the Bible say I have to be in church and you don't have to be in church? Give me the scripture, can you? Give it to me. Where is it? The Bible says, neglect not the assembling of yourself together as the manner of some is. Even the more you see the day approaching, people get lackadaisy just in church attendance. You know, if you don't come to church and you have children, you are influencing your children not to serve God. You are influencing your children to be inconsistent in serving God. Do you get me? Do you get it? Do you get it? You're influencing people all the time just by the way you serve God. Sunday, I'm not picking on anybody because I don't know who's in church, a lot of people. Um, but you choose to stay at home. 
because there's a little bit of rain. How the heck are you going to go change the world if that's your level of Christianity? How the heck? If you can't even get your lazy behind out of bed. But we're talking about changing the world. But we don't have the willpower to get out of bed. Disciplined. Is it too close to home now? Preach or speech? My life is for you to to go. How long is it Ja, dat is wolken. Ach, dan is het helemaal niet bed. Nee, prachtig. Ik wil niet eens die goed dat spraat. Want ik. Hier brein van mij. Adbolsof. Hier wat staan in die vlees. Zoals Paulus zei, ze betekenen praat ik in die geest. Die in die geest betekenen, denk ik, ik praat hier door mijn eigen kop. Ik praat hier mijn eigen kop. Hier die kop van mij. Kan het niet verstaan. Laat iemand die hier al vaartig dien. Kan het niet in die kop en krijgen. Dat jij zei je Jezus niet. En jij hanteer Jezus alsof hij. Ik kan het niet eens begrijpen. Hier die brein van mij. Ik kan het niet begrijpen. En je wil die wereld veranderen. Let's get real. Because until we don't get real, everything we do is just like social media. It's hot air, it's noise, but it lacks commitment, it lacks substance, it lacks the tenacity, the willpower to go beyond convenience and comfort for the sake of the kingdom and for the sake of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Come on, you know what I'm saying is true. Give him a praise so you don't look like the person that's in disagreement, okay? Amen. Take your seat, thank you. Take your seat. I want every head bowed, every eye closed, no one moving, please. Yeah, in uh, Bloemenheim, there in Pretoria, Johannesburg, in all our churches. Full on or not at all. There's no middle way. And there's no judgment. There's a challenge where Jesus says, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father but by me. We want to be influencers. We need to allow God to influence us, the grace of God to influence us. And tonight, you're sitting in this place, you're not living full on for God. There in Pretoria, you've not surrendered your life to Jesus totally. And listen, there's no partial surrender. There's no fence. There's no middle way. You either live full on for God or you don't. And tonight, I know God's talking to many of you. And you're saying, Pastor, I need to surrender all to Jesus Christ. I want to get back where I was. I want to get back on fire for God. I want to give my life to Jesus Christ. Tonight, I want to surrender all to Jesus. Tonight, I need a new beginning, a fresh start with God. Tonight, I want to be that person you spoke about. And it's going to start with my total surrender. Giving myself to Jesus. My spirit, my soul, my body. Giving myself to Jesus Christ tonight. Every head bowed, every eye closed. They're in Cape Town, Pots of Struam, right here. They're in Vintuk. Kabarone, wherever you are tonight, right where you are, God's talking. If you forget about your friends tonight, you say tonight, yes. I want to surrender my life to Jesus. I want to come back to Jesus. I want to live full on for God. Every head bowed, forget people around you. It's irrelevant what people think. This is you and God. Tonight you say, I'm hearing you, Pastor. I need to get right with God. I need to surrender my life to Jesus. If that's the cry of your heart, Quietly, wherever you are, lift your hand up quickly. I want to say a prayer for you. Raise it up. All over this place. Lift it, lift it, lift it, lift it. Thank you. Many hands everywhere. Raise it, raise it, raise it. God bless you, bless you, bless you, bless you, bless you. God bless you all over this place. Many, 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 many. Up there on the balcony, many hands. There in Pretoria, raise your hand. The floor of the ramps, raise your hand. There's no distance that the, the realm of the Spirit of God's talking to you. It's like a fire burning in your heart tonight. Tonight you say yes. Tonight you say yes. I'm going to be an influencer. I'm going to live for Jesus. I'm going to surrender everything to Jesus. Tonight is a turning point in my life. You've not yet raised your hand. Slip your hand up quickly. All over this place. Raise it up now. In Jesus' name, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. 
God bless you, bless you, bless you. God bless you, bless you, bless you. Many hands everywhere. Please stand with me. All of you thousands, stand with me there in Pretoria. Stand with me. If you're not in a wheelchair, you don't have serious disease, aged or whatever it is, please stand. God bless you with two great legs. Stand to your feet, many of you have raised your hand there in Pretoria as well. I see those hands, many of you. Tonight you're going to come to Christ. There's going to be many people who turn back to God all over this place. Maybe you brought a friend. We know that your love will bring your friend to Christ. So all over this place, I want you to take your Bible, your personal belongings, whatever you brought to church, so it doesn't disappear. Leave your seat wherever you are. You mean this. You want to get right with God. Leave your seat and walk down yet to the altar. There on the balcony, come down the steps closer to you. Don't think about it. Make your way to the altar tonight. Leave your chair and you come down this way. Then Pretoria, leave your seat and walk to the altar tonight. Come on, respond to what is happening in your heart tonight. Tonight is a new beginning. God's waiting for you tonight. You come, you come, you come, you come, 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 come. Oh, come on, leave your seat. Walk to the altar tonight. Come on. Come on, Pretoria, put your hands together. Camera on me, on me, camera. Come on there in Pretoria, leave your seat, walk to the altar. There in Cape Town, leave your seat, walk to the altar. Come on there in Potchard's room, God's talking to you tonight, young girl. Come on, you are going to be the influence and leave your seat. You walk, 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 walk to the altar. Come on, Port Elizabeth. There in Kimberley tonight, leave your seat. Walk to the altar tonight. Come on, there's a fire burning in your heart. It's the Holy Ghost calling you. Calling you. You come. You come. You come. You come. You come tonight. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on, let's clap our hands. Come on, there's more of you. Get out of your seat. You're not going to sit on the fence any longer. Come on. God has called you. God needs you. This is your time. This is your time to make up your mind. This is your time to decide. This is your time to surrender. This is your time to avail yourself. This is your time to say yes. Come on there in Pretoria. House of influence. Come on. Come on! Come on, I feel a pull of God for Pretoria. More of you. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Leave your seat and walk to that altar tonight. Come to Jesus. Come. Come as you are. Come on, we're going to sing it two more times. As you know, welcome. Come from on. Money let your throat you stop me. Money let the atmosphere you were well the thing. Come from on. It is a begin from it's growth in your life. It's nicks in your life. Come, come, come. Sing it one more time. Hey! There are thousands of people here, 4,000 plus standing in this building tonight in, 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 in Bloemfontein. And the students aren't back. Listen, listen, listen. You know, God doesn't need thousands. He needs a few. But if He has thousands, He can, he can change the nation. Shake the nation. You make up your mind goal tonight. Listen to me. One thing I loved about doing camps is... Um, 
I would always go and initially you're the only Christian who shines. And uh, when we went to Angola, traveled here from the Brug, eight hours to get 480 kilometers in Angola. Um, by the time we were there, I had many, many, many people ask me to pray for them. Because the first thing they recognized was, without me saying a word, I can't just all the I was overseer. Maak nie so hulle gevloek nie. En toe hulle allemaal begin syp te drink ek nie. Net dit het vir hulle klaar gesê. Hier is iets anders om te jou. And initially they tried to mock me. But, as it bleef toch. Rarag, I come out of the world. Jy gaan my nie intimideer nie. Met jou onnoosleid nie. Fees bly, ek is gereed gewees. Then, so, makes me more determined, more stronger. And, by the time we went up there, the one guy came to my uh, job attend in Angola and he said, my driver, uh, Glenn Moore, he says, please pray for me. I said, I'm not going to pray for you, you're drunk. Come the next day. That's just before we went into battle. And then what after the other? And then, listen to this. God gives me the opportunity. The day before we go into a certain situation and there's 3,000 people standing on the, on the, in the bush, 480 kilometers in Angola. And I pray to God because the chaplain spoke to all of them a few days before, and he told them nothing. I knew people were going to die. So I said to him, not at that, I said, you have to and he told them nothing. So he didn't show up that morning. I prayed. I said, God, don't let him come. And I'm standing there. And the brigade commander, I don't want to say his name, he calls my name. He says, come. You know, I'm a Christian. I always had my New Testament. Yeah. He says, he calls me, I march with a sergeant major and I open the Bible and I read Romans 10, verse 9 and 10. From verse 8 to 13, 3,000 people, God gives me the opportunity. Still, dood, 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 still. In Angola. Kijk, die dieren was alles dood geskiet gewees. Die voels was weg, was die lever, was niks. Het was dood still. Vroeg in die ochtend, net voor ons op die afmarslijn gegaan het. And God gives me this opportunity. And I open the Bible and I read. Romans... 10 verse 8 to 13 and I say pray after me and as as all those people pray the salvation prayer God gave me the opportunity hallelujah yes 480 kilometers in Angola God gave me the opportunity to pray the sinner's prayer with all of them without permission by the way because all I had to do script lesson and gebed uh, was just to, to, to read and then say, Segen Vader, Segen Eet, and laat ons nummer die vergeet, and Amen. I said, no, all of you. Now I said this. Some of us may not make it, but I spoke about eternity. I said, you can give your life to Jesus. And right there, I said, everybody say this prayer after me. And all of them prayed with the Lord. You talk about opportunities and exciting life. When you stand for Jesus, He's going to open doors for you. And you are going to turn people to Christ, which is the greatest reward ever, ever, ever. That's who we are. That's your adrenaline rush, not snorting cocaine. What's that? Snorting your brain away. We'll pray for you. Privilege to pray with all of you. God loves you. God created you. God knows you by name. And God has predestined you for this hour, no matter how things seem. A lot of challenges this generation faces, many uncertainties. But I promise you, walk with God, stay in a church, this church, and you will. Find the life that God has for you and the purpose that Jesus has for you. But tonight you're going to give yourself to Him. And you're going to break with every known sin. You're going to break with it. If you have a stash of dacha, which I did after I got saved, I flushed my dacha, flushed my mandrakes, flushed my pornography, flushed everything. I got rid of my stuff. You understand that? I got rid of it. I didn't keep the, the junk. I got rid of it. 
you're going to get rid of your nonsense tonight. When you go home, you're going to flush it down the toilet. Not sell it, flush it, burn it. Not burn it and smoke it, you're going to burn it. You're going to get rid of it, 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 rid of it. Some of you have to go back. Some of you have to go and have a house cleaning ceremony yourself. Clean out your cupboards, clean under your bed, clean your laptop, clean your stuff, clean your cell phone, clean your contact list, clean your social media, clean, clean, block, delete, clean. Become that light, visible light in Jesus. Oh, come on! In Jesus' name, come on! Put your hand on your heart, pray this with me tonight. Say, Jesus, I give my life back to you. I believe with all my heart you died for my sin. I believe you rose from the grave. I believe you're alive. Tonight, I accept you as my Lord and Savior. And I ask you to wash me in your blood and to break the power and the hold of sin over my life. Thank you tonight that you hear my prayer and that you save my soul. And tonight, I turn to you and I know that you receive me and you give me a fresh start. In Jesus' name, I receive your grace, your love tonight. And I know that I am free and I'm forgiven and I'm born again and I have a future and all my sins are forgiven. Because you washed me in your blood. I'm free. I'm forgiven. I'm righteous. I'm your child. In Jesus' name. Amen and amen and amen. Come on. Let's give the Lord praise. Come on, CRC. Come on, all our youth pastors from Cape Town to Khabarone to Vindor. Come on. Come on, be trailblazers. Come on. I want to hear the stories about fire. Fire in the schools, fire in the campuses, fire. No more talk. You go pray a fire down. You pray, you stand, you preach, and watch God show up. Because you stand for God, God's going to stand for you. This is your time. Come on, let's be full on for God. Let's be radical for God. Let's be filled with the Holy Ghost. Let's be light bearers. Let's be the salt of the earth. Because that's who we are. It's our nature. It's our character. We're not these scary, timid, intimidated Christians. We are the light of the world and the salt of the earth, born again, born for this hour, born to overcome. This is who we are. We are here and we will shape the culture of our day in our world, in our nation, where we find ourselves. We will be the influencers. Come on, lift your hand and say, I am an influencer. Say it again. I am an influencer. Say it again. I am an influencer for the glory of God. Say amen and give the Lord a praise. Come on in Jesus' name. Come on, here is on stage. Met God loop ek a bende storm, met God spring ek oor a mier. Come on, nie die lam sakke, ge elendige christenskap nie. Ons is geboren vir die tyd, kom ons verander ons wereld. Maak jou rugraad sterk. Lug jou kop op en maak een verskil van God. Want dis jou tyd, dis jou doel, dis jou bestemming. Maak een verskil waar jy is. Jy is die sout, jy is die licht, jy het die vermoe. Gaan wees wat God jou geroep het om te wees. In Jesus' name, amen. Can we put a Bible in your hand, pray for you. I know I'm loud, but I'm passionate, okay. So turn to my left, your right, you're in Bloemenheim in Pretoria. Turn to my right, your left. Give them all a big, big, big God bless you. Come on, it's great to see hundreds getting saved, getting right with God. Come on, keep on clapping. It's many of them. All of them, every one of them. Oh, come on, think what God is going to do through every life, through your life. Think where God can take you, where God will take you. Come on. Come on, how you can revolutionize the fashion industry. But influence. Influence your world. Be an influencer where God has placed you. Be an influencer. Not a critic, an influencer. Show people a better way. Show people a new way. Bring people to church with you. Come on. Come on. 
Come on, just praise him a bit. Come on, praise him a bit. Praise him a bit. An influencer among other business people. An influencer among all the doctors. An influencer among the professors at university. Influencing every level of society. You are the light. You are the influence. You are the influence. You carry the influence. Agriculture. New innovations. New technologies. Come on, you have God's creative ability in you. Influencing local government. I want to I say this. Um, many of the influencers in the Bible were all young people, by the way, okay? Yeah, all the disciples of Jesus were under the age of 30. Jesus himself was 30. Jeremiah was 17. David was 17. Uh, Samuel was 12 years old. They influenced history. Shadrach, Meshach, Abednego, Daniel were all teenagers, etc. What the heck is up with teenagers that think they don't have to grow up? Huh? You know, Mary, the mother of Jesus, was about 12 years old, between 12 and 14, when she fell pregnant with Jesus. You understand that? Huh? And she quoted scripture. Somehow this world is telling you, stay young, stay young, stay irresponsible. Uh, yeah. No, 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 no. No. Paul was a young man as a pastor. He pastored a church of 10,000. He was under 30 years old, etc. What is this thing about that age? You're too young to be an influencer. It's nonsense. Your major musicians, um, Justin Bibby, all these people started <laughs> when they were young. In his teens. Huh? Where are the teenage influencers? Yeah. Don't let those boys objectify you. Don't let them... Uh, you show them you're better. You're gorgeous. You're beautiful. But they ain't getting their filthy hands close to you in Jesus' name. And if they look at you once too often... You just put them on social media. No, don't do that. Don't do that. Don't name and shame people. That's not a good thing. Okay? Don't do it. It can backfire. Take your seats as we prepare to give an offering. So um, look at the person next to you and see what they're giving. Okay, every church, sing your anointed item, please. Let's see who's the most anointed. What do the angels say? I'm sure it's going to be very anointed, yeah. Presence. And 
the song of my soul, the one thing I love. Amen, family. Can we all stand to our feet as we close the service in prayer? Father, we thank you for this time in your presence. We thank you, Father God, that we are yours. We are the salt of the earth. We are the light of the world. May we go out there and make a difference in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. We give you praise and glory, Lord God, for what you are going to do in and through us in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. God bless you and have yourselves a fantastic week.